In my previous video, I showed how America isn't in the end times as it relates to the book of Revelation and other times events in the Middle East. Now, you'll be able to see with your own eyes how President Trump's executive orders is drawing America away from the world and the world away from America, setting the stage for what the Lord has been telling us. And that is, there's no America mentioned in the book of Revelation or in end time events in the Middle East. Now, just stay tuned and see for yourself how the Lord is just confirming this again. Watchmen, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Watch Watching Brooks of Christ Watching Ministry. And I serve the Lord Jesus Christ by feeding you his sheep. And I do this by feeding you updates, information, and news events with a Christian biblical perspective, especially as it relates to biblical end time events that will lead to Jesus' second coming, as he told us things to watch for that will point to his return. So I'm that news source for you that is based in scripture for the Christian body of Christ. And I hope I serve you well. Now in my previous video, I wanted to go and explain how America is not mentioned in the end times as it relates to the book of Revelation or different uh, texts in the Bible that points to different things that's gonna happen in the Middle East. No America comes and swoops down with a flag and saves the day. And it still surprises me how some Christians still believe that. I just I got it as recently today. This brother here goes on to tell me that the white horse in the first seal is George Bush. Really, George Bush? He, uh, I, I, I like, I, uh. and, you know, it's this consistent pride of America, all the great red, white, and blue, is going to just come in and swoop in and just save the day and be this godly hero for Israel in the end times. And I go on to show in the video that I was talking about here that God has no problem with pointing out countries in the world that He knows all about. In the past, present, and future. God has pointed out Turkey, God has pointed out Greece, God has pointed out Egypt, God has pointed out Israel, obviously, God has pointed out Iraq, God has pointed out the kings of the east over in the uh, UAE, God has pointed out uh, Ethiopia, God has pointed out um, uh, Libya. God has no problem with pointing out countries. So it's not hard for him to say in the end times there's be this country across the ocean in the west that's going to come in and swoop in to save the day. However, Americans, especially Christian Americans, have a very pride idolatry around America. But if you God were to truly look at America for what it truly is in the state of Christianity it is today, oh, we have definitely dropped the ball. It's become so bad to how the gospel has lost its purity in terms of how the church is today. So if you think that God is going to come and use America because of its Christian integrity, please. A lot of Christians are so divided. I mean, we can't even agree on when Jesus is set to return. The rapture should happen pre-tribulation, post-tribulation. We can't even agree on that. So how in the world is America going to collectively come together in the name of Jesus Christ to go and save the day over in Israel? Besides all that, you may think I'm just making all that up and you can just throw it out the window anyway. Well, just look at the scriptures, as I said before, in the book of Revelation, as it mentions countries in there, there's no mention of a country all over the seas from the west that's going to shroof come in with the American flag and just save the day. It's not happening. The only thing you can really cite in terms of America is indirectly when Jesus talks about there should be nations against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And the reason why you see this is because when Jesus talking about nations against nations, that's all the countries on the western side of the planet, the western hemisphere, stretching from uh, North America all the way to South America. There is no monarchies. These are nations. There are no monarchies. Canada, Canada's not a monarchy. America's not a monarchy. Uh, South America's not a monarchy. So that is all nations. These are all nations. But however, if you go to the eastern part of the world, you can go from UK all the way down to, the, uh, to Asia, to the Middle East, and you will find even in Africa that there are monarchies in these regions of the world. Monarchies, 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 which are called kingdoms. So as Jesus is talking about kingdom against kingdoms and nations against nations, he's talking about the, the, the wars between the east western side of the world and world conflicts on the eastern side of the world. So that's what he's talking about. And America's on the western side of the hemisphere. But why is America not involved and how will that be? Well, we see with President Trump's executive orders, these EOs are setting in motion 
how and showing us how America is just drifting away from the global conflicts that's going to come in the end times. Let's go to December 2017. Remember when President Trump decided to take the embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and then declare that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel? Well, I mean, the Lord already said this, so I really can't say anything about it, but it got the whole world upset because they believe that doing this is going to just stifle and make more tension between the Middle East peace process between the Palestinians and Israelis. To the world, they're thinking that this is like doing gasoline on an already lit fire that's growing over there and it will just make more conflict. So this is what the world decided to do in the United Nations in December 7th of 2017. They got together and started to vote on how they felt and wanted to have a non-binding resolution, which is basically more symbolic than anything, to really show their disgust about this move that President Trump decided to do, moving the embassy to Jerusalem. So to show their defiance against President Trump for making this move, they had a vote and UN voted 128 to 9. 128 nations was against this move of United States moving their embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. So that's 128 nations that's already showing that they're not in favor with us. They're disgusted with how we did that move as a country and they're showing that on the global stage. They're discussing the defiance against what the president did in that EO. What he told those nations is he threatened to cut their funding if they decided to vote against the president's wishes of declaring Jerusalem the capital of Israel. So you can see now this tension between this, uh, the nations of the world and the United States, this animosity of the world and the United States and the defiance with the world and what the United States position is and what the president is doing. That's just the UN perspective, which includes the world and how they are viewing the United States, which is not good. So that, keep that in mind. Then we had before that in February when the Secretary of Defense, General Mattis, went to speak to the NATO allies. NATO is essentially a bunch of countries that decided to work with the United States and that we would be partners with them and they would be partners with us. That if one would attack them, the United States would come and show their support. If someone attacked us, they, they would come and show their support. So NATO is that type of foreign countries that come together in Europe that, that works one, to well one another with their own collective interests uh, for security purposes. You had Secretary of Defense, General when Mattis went and spoke to the NATO military alliance and told them that they need to pick up the tab because America is spending too much and more than the other allies of the NATO alliance and that they need to pick up the bill or that there may have to be some changes because President Trump feel that we're paying too much and America is shouldering the burden more than the other NATO allies and that they need to pick up the pace. General Mattis went on to say, I owe it to you all to give you clarity on the political reality in the United States and to state the fair demand from my country's people in concrete terms. America will meet its responsibilities, but if your nations do not want to see America moderate its, moderate its commitment to the alliance, each of your capitals need to show its support for our common defense. As you can see for years of the United States picking up a bill with the NATO alliances not paying as much because they can't, we see that now this is gonna get them concerned. But here's the problem. They're only gonna to go to who can provide the security for the nations because if a nation can't pay the bill as America threatens and wants them to, then no one else is gonna come and pay that bill and which will make that country more loyal to someone else because America is not gonna do that as it once was. We have the UN that's concerned because President Trump and the United States position on Israel and Jerusalem being the capital. And we have the United Nations worried because of President Trump's threats of changing the funding because they voted against America's interests. So we have the UN that's worried on that front. Second, we have the NATO alliance that's worried because they can't pay the bill that America wants them to pay and thus the funding would be changed. And if that's changed in the alliance of the NATO uh, military uh, um, allies will then be suffer, which means that there will be a vacuum and someone else will easily want to come in and provide military security and they will only be loyal to whoever's providing their security. So there goes UN, there goes NATO, let's see what else we got. Have just as recently as March 5th, we have North Korea leaders and South Korea leaders meeting for the first time in years without America there. America was not involved in the photo op, if anything, maybe behind the scenes of North Korea and South Korea leaders meeting. This is such a pivotal moment in the history of those two countries that 
collectively would always be at odds with one another in America in the middle at the same time. So we have the most two tense countries in the world, North Korea and South Korea, coming together and meeting and discussing diplomatic talks without America, the ones who's usually the body that brokers such a deal. So you see that this is pivotal and very important to understand with regards to how America is not playing the role on a global level as it normally would play that role with respect to two countries at odds that are threatening one another yet now they're talking face to face and again this just plays to another role of America's position of strength and influence in the world that's slowly withering away now we have America that's losing influence in trade they weren't able to broker a deal recently with the CP C PTPP. It's called the Comprehensive Progressive Agreement Trans Pacific Partnership, where you have 11 countries deciding to come together to lower their tariffs so that they can all have more economic success with their countries and boost GDP for their nation. This is on the heels of President Trump declaring tariffs on aluminum and steel. And now, this country, these countries, these 11 nations now come together and say, hey, Fine, if that's what America's want to do, then we're going to do our own thing here, lower the tariffs, you come over here and we have business with us, since America's going to raise their tariffs, which is the taxing of an imported aluminum and steel. Now you're seeing, as I began before, with you have the UN showing their defiance against us. You have the U.S. threatening other nations because they d disagree with us. You have NATO uneasy because they can't fit the bill that America wants them to pay. You also have now North Korea and South Korea making peace between one another without America brokering the deal. You have trade, gl global trade, that usually have America's hand involved in it because of America's interest, but they decide to work opposed of America because of what America is doing against the world in terms of economics and trade. Now, even though President Trump decided to declare a tariff and put 25% tax on imports of steel and 10% tax on imports of aluminum, that's really got U.S. allies uh, very, very concerned because that is going to just make costs go up for them. But the president decided to say, okay, we'll give an exemption to Canada and Mexico, really using this as leverage to try to get them to twist and turn and bend to the will of President Trump with regards to trade. But trade usually never works when you're starting to threaten other countries with cost rather than negotiating a deal. Now our allies across the ocean are going to be very concerned and upset because they're going to get tariffs as opposed to Canada and Mexico that won't get tariffs and they're allies but then the allies across the ocean who are also allies but they're going to they're going to get tariffs but the ones that are not across the ocean that are above that are connected to the United States won't get taxed. It's just conf a big mess. I'm confused of what I'm saying. So basically overseas allies are very upset that they're going to get tariffs as opposed to those who are bordering our nation are not going to get tariffs, but then they're not going to get tariffs contingent on if they give into the will of President Trump. You have the UN that is upset, you have NATO that's concerned, you have nations that are making economic trade deals without us, you have nations that have animosity between one another making uh, peace deals and talks, diplomatic uh, talks and discussions without America broking and brokering those meetings and being in those meetings. And now you have this U.S. allies across the uh, uh, ocean that are just feeling upset because they're now going to get in uh, they're not going to receive tariffs because they're allies but the allies that are bordering the United States are not going to receive tariffs so it's just culminating to what I've been saying before that we see America drifting away from the world and we see the world drifting away from America which is going to lay the foundation for what the Lord told us in the book of Revelation and other end times texts. So I'll put a link below for all the articles that were referenced in this uh, video if you want to read them in detail. If anyone else has a concern or question on this topic, share this video, get the word out. You all are extension of what I do, which is extension of what uh, believers did before me, and we're all just continuing the legacy and the work of the Lord, how the Holy Spirit leads us. Amen. So tell me, what do you think? Do you see this actually moving in a perspective like the Lord is showing us in the book of Revelation and throughout Scripture? 
how America doesn't come in and swoop in and save the day. It's actually seeing a withdrawal from the world in the United States. Do you see that now with what the Lord is showing? Tell me what you think. I'd love to know your thoughts about it. And also make sure you do subscribe to this channel. Give me a thumbs up if you really like this and share it. Get the word out. Let me serve the body of Christ through you as the Holy Spirit leads. And make sure you visit the website and subscribe too, guys. That way you also get our newsletters and make sure you're in the loop and I can keep you fed, keep you posted, keep you informed of what's going on in the world. And as the Lord said to go the extra mile, if you definitely feel in your heart that this is serving the body of Christ and I'm doing what a lot of other Christian leaders are not doing, please support us on Patreon, be a monthly subscriber, monthly membership, and you'll receive incentives on uh, the tier levels there and subscribe to whichever you believe it's uh, will be beneficial to us and that will be beneficial to you to provide you value uh, that can serve you as a sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you so much. I love doing this. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I love serving you uh, by serving him to increase him in your heart that I may decrease. So I'll keep you all in prayer. Keep watching. And remember, guys, Jesus is coming.